So this was the pedal board I built last year and basically the guitar goes into the switchblade and then splits the signals into two different distortion chains. So here we have one that says Mesa because it was supposed to be go to into my Mesa amp. And then one that says F-O, you see it means Fender-Orange. So this is the Fender-Orange chain and this is the Mesa chain. And here is an effects loop chain that if um, I use my orange, I have reverb. So, and I'm going to change it now because I have actually given my Fender amp to my friend. So I don't need this section basically because I, I haven't started making some new songs and it does, they doesn't include in any of these paddles at all. And I'm only going to use my Mesa with a couple of add-ons to my Mesa. So I also need to have space for my Mesa uh, foot switch. So basically means having all the pedals here and trying to get the foot switch to fit in here. I've already found a problem. This is not going to fit anywhere on the pedal board, I think. Unless I only use this part of the pedal board, but then I don't have any space left for other things, so... Pull my shit. Start the removal process. Start with the beginning. You were out, you were out. And you get a pedal. And you get a pedal. Let's see. Go from the input. So all these cables, um, I have made them myself to be custom fitted when I built this pedal board. Well, let's see, I built this pedal board back in could it be July or August maybe? Maybe in another hole. There we go. Let's see. That didn't go as planned though. Let's see, so if I try to have this there. Yeah, I'm going this time around I'm going to put more tape on it. So the tape on the pedal will stick because when I had been away to the studio recording something and then I, when I got back home all the pedals had fallen off. As you can see with this one, the thunder claw, that it is not like enough when the cold air outside is basically hemorrhaging on it, if I should say it like that. I think maybe I can use this here, because the thunder claw is no longer going to be on my pedal board. This pedal is, so. Sorry, thunder claw. You are going into the cupboard again. Let's see here. really long one, the longer one I made, and <coughs> maybe I should let this one stay, let's see if this there, oh yeah, <coughs> this one's taking a lot of space though, I can't even fit my mini pedals behind it, so yeah, I might need to have this, uh, like not attached to my pedal board because it's, it's unfortunately too big for the Metro 20 from pedal train like that. So yeah, here you, you are staying. You are oh, my friend. Unfortunately, I haven't ever used you, so for, for the recording video or blog I put up earlier. But you are where I'm going. You, Mr. EVH5150 Overdrive, the most expensive pedal I own. You are going into the cover. Ouch. What happened? Oh. The <coughs> battery box decided to get my. Yeah, this pedal is going into the cover because 
my amp has already the gain I need. And this is basically a preamp on an older drive, so you are the only current pedal that is staying, so you get your power plug in back again. But you are going to get a friend. You are going to get the boss. Let's see if I remember correctly. Yes, the boss DD3. Because one of the songs has a melody on it uh, during the chorus and it requires a delay. Or, well, I'm going to add a delay to it on the recording. So I might as well have the delay if there ever is a time when I play the song live. So let's see here. Um, um, the basically, the main thing is now I'm not going to use two amps anymore live because it's just such a hassle. And I pl when I play live, I play at the places where you don't have two amps available or you can't use two amps because of limited space on this on the scene, or on the stage, sorry, mixed between layers. Um, you don't have enough space on the stage, and you can also, you can't crank the amps. And I noticed that when I was doing the recording for the band Premature earlier, that you need to have the amps pretty loud to get the, like, good distorted stereo effect, if I'm going to say it like that. So, I'm not going to use two amps anymore, and I'm just going to use that for recording, and basically skip it for the rest. So, the thing with my tone now for the, from the Mesa amp is that I've, I've found a tone that I like, but I need an overdrive. And you might look at me and say I'm stupid or what, but I prefer the, the Digitech Hardwire overdrive over the Ibanez Mini 2 screen. I only, like I said, I only use this once, but there's something special with this one and I use the wild and I know how it sounds and yeah, I like it, so I'm going to use this one instead so I'm going to remove the tape and this is going to be first in the chain now so <coughs> I'm going to put you here for the reason that I am planning when I have money and right now, uh, now at the moment I don't have any money basically and yeah when I have money, I'm going to buy me a mini tuner from TC Electronic and put it here. I had a TC Electronic tuner, I gave it away to the same friend that they got the Fender amp, but uh, I have decided that I needed a tuner again because I'm not going to use my Gibson uh, Studio that has the built-in tuner or the robot tuner all the time. So I'm going to use my Les Paul CM with my rig the most, most of the time because I actually prefer it for the moment, how it sounds. So basically, overdrive, and then you're going to look at me a bit funny maybe, because after the overdrive, I'm either going to have the Boss DS1 that I modified, and this one was actually broken and I repaired it like two days ago. And try it out. And right now I'm having the Kurt Cobain setting on it, just to basically make it sound distorted and really bad. And on the recording of one of the songs that I recorded for eventual release, I used this as a filler tone. So basically, I have the amp recorded, the one left and one right. And in the middle track, I have this one on the crunch channel of the Mesa, just making noise basically and sound like a robot. So either it's this one here or the Electro Harmonics Big Muff. The problem with the Big Muff is that it's just a big pedal that it won't fit. So maybe I need to think about my tuner idea and maybe move this one here and have a tuner here then later on. Or maybe, let's see, the reverb I don't actually need but I want to have it unless I'm not if I'm not using my own amp because I need to have a reverb that I know how it sounds even though I never powered it one, this one on yet but I have a setting that I can beam to it basically that I like or beam I can put it on the USB cable so my, my idea is now I'm probably going to put the Big Muff should I put the Big Muff before the DS1 maybe so I can do it like 
this and then have the PS1. No, not like that. I'm going to put the hardware overdrive there. The big muff here, the DS1. And then I'm going to take the DD3 right here. So yeah, I'm moving the, the hardware one, the, C, the CM2 the, to the hard overdrive. Gonna make it all the way here. Oh, it, it doesn't seem too. It seems like it's not fitting perfectly into place. So I'm trying to get the most of the space I have. <laughs> Maybe that's pretty obvious. So yeah, then I need a short one. So this one is going to be from the output of it to the input of the the boss, the bows, and I'm going to put them like that, so they are really close to each other, so I can save enough space and maybe fit them enough. Let's see. Oh, uh, if I'm doing it like this, I'm con totally going to fit them enough. So let's remove you and try to. Let's see if I can put you there. Down and on both places. I'm just going to need to go and get a scissor. Let's see. A few there, and I'll cut you off there. So, no. Get lost. So, you can be on the three for a while. There you go. One is on, then you are going to see. I can put you there. You are going to see there, and then I will do him, and then let's see. I'm going to put you. Here. So you are not really perfectly fitted, but now you see the, the, these cables are basically hugging it out now, so they are, are close as close as pos pos possible, close as possible. Yes, they both have power out, out there. So let's see. I have one here for power, and then you have power there. So yeah, now we have power. So this one is a bit uh, longer. So yeah, I'm going to take the output of the DS1. That's it, some two. You're breaking. Oh, fuck. Let's go to try out the uh, the out. Let's see. Input of the no. Apparently, I have a battery still in it. So I see. I I want maybe want you like that. So this is since this is a big pedal, and you probably need to put a bit of it, the tape on all three finger jigs. And then you can still fit in. Oh, well, I'm not going to put you there, but let's look okay, for first thing. Now, let's move the whole phase mini to the edge. Oh, you're really stuck there. Holy shit, Jesus, Jesus. You are stuck there. Let's see. So now, if I put the big muff here, I have a really, really small place. But I have this short one, so what if I put you there and you there, maybe like that. The only problem then is the power outlet. Your power outlet needs to go between the pedals and 
Heck yeah, that was it. So now I need to put some tape probably on you. You can sit there and you will be there. Let's work with you. Start out with a big hairy mouth. Big mouth, big fluff. Let's see you there. Half of it. So I need that amount. I'm half assing it right now. I'm trying to use as much as possible of the, the things that I have. Genoved. So let's cut it up. I like the words you know. Let's show you. How come you don't? I like the words you know. So, now let's take a complete piece. There. Cut through. I forgot. You like to get stuck to things. You can get lost. This enough. Let's see. My eye measurements aren't completely off. Cheerio! See you there. Cut you up. Let's cut you up. You raise me up. So I to say no more things. So now you, let's see. You. And, no. We can't all stop. Stick. They, it doesn't sit that well. Let's hope it just doesn't fall off and plug the power in. There you go. So now I have the distortion side finished. Yeah. I just need to take you down here because you're going into the lift. Now it might be hard for you to see, so I'm going to turn this around or something like this here. To see. To see. To see. Put you there. Yeah. One in the each part of the pedal. Yeah. If you're wondering why I'm not removing the, from the, the Ivan S2 screen or the split, it's that I might put them on another board, a recording board maybe. This is going to be my play and jam out board. So, yeah, play live and jam out board. I'm at. So, there we go. Play, play, play. Hold those plays, cut those and go you know, it's time to hunt and you get a lot of day. I'm not sure that makes you cool, but I think so. You know, I told you I'm not a lot of style. I'm not a man. So I'm not a man. So I'm not a man. I'm not a man. I'm not a man. You know, you can learn. You're not a man. So, this is it. This is going to be a new Yahweh Rocker TV pedal board for 2017. 
this. Do some cool shots. <laughs> 